It is academic malpractice to not have the Bible in your curriculum, to not tell young people about the role that the Bible played in American history. Our kids can't understand why the founders gave us our, you know, said that our rights came from God. Our, our, our young people will never understand how America became exceptional without understanding the incredible impact the Bible had on our history, what it, the impact mm. it had on the leaders in America. Oklahoma teachers now required to teach the Bible and Ten Commandments in their classrooms. Quote, an indispensable historical and cultural touchstone, no matter if it upsets the left. Joining us now is a member of the Superintendent's Advisory Committee. It's Father Stephen Hamilton. Father, thanks for being with us this morning. So, what a fascinating move. And in many ways, an unassailable position to maintain that the Bible is a foundational document for the United States of America. It's interwoven faith, Christianity. It's interwoven into the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States. And we can't really educate kids pretending like it doesn't exist. Very true. Um, thanks for having me on, Will. And it's a great uh, day here in Oklahoma, a uh, great opportunity with this Bible policy because it gives us an opportunity for a renewed focus on a source document of our cultural patrimony, uh, recognizing the Bible's value from a historical and a literary perspective. I think, uh, to be clear, uh, this is not a policy about using the Bible as a religious or devotional use. Rather, it's an academic study from a historical and literary perspective and not a devotional perspective. And I just think, because I want to move forward to what's the inevitable controversy around this, but I do want to underline what we're both saying here is you're just— if, if the idea of a separation of church and state is to pretend like the church is not in existence and didn't play a historical role, then you're really not giving an accurate view of the past, of reality. You, you have to acknowledge the existence because it was so foundational. But then we get to the controversial part, Father, right? And that is, okay, but what about the separation of church and state? Here's what the Interfaith Alliance says. This is blatant religious coercion. They should have absolutely no place in public schools. True religious freedom means ensuring that no one religious group is allowed to impose their viewpoint on Americans. So they're making the argument now, okay, now you have blended church and state and you were preaching Christianity in public school. And, and that's an argument, frankly, that everyone expects. And it's, look, it's a legitimate question. I would be the first person to say this is a type of robust debate we ought to be having. But I would suggest that the alliance's comment and quote uh, is a clear indication that they're not approaching this policy in the way it's actually written, which is approaching the Bible as a valuable document of history and literature. Uh, their comment is all about uh, indoctrination of a religion. It's all about formation in faith or devotional use. And that's just precisely not what this policy is. So that comment, while understandable, uh, coming uh, from a secular perspective, is just not germane to what this policy actually is and, about. And how will, we be, how will we ensure, Father, that, and I don't know that you know the answer to this, but how do we ensure that that, that, that line is maintained, that, that a teacher remains a teacher and not a father or a preacher? Right, right. I, hey, I, uh, I want my, my kids in my parish to learn about God and faith and to be formed in it from their parents, first of all, and from me and my assistant clergy, uh, not, not from someone uh, in a public right. school necessarily. So it's a legitimate question, and I think that policy will have to be drawn out. I don't necessarily know the answer to that, but I can tell you that the Oklahoma State Department of Education is presently right. you know, answering Working questions on that. to develop and I'm curricula sorry. and also to address that. I'm sorry to cut you off, Father. Hard break, fascinating discussion. More Fox sure. and Friends coming up. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.